Okay, so this video is all about the key concepts in the Unit 3 exam paper. Um, it's not a dumbed-down version, okay, but it's sort of just to give you a bit of clarity on what some of these sort of uh, definitions mean. Um, so, first one is the Bible. Now, the Bible is um, the main source of wisdom and authority for Catholics, and it is a book that contains the Old and New Testament, um, and it contains what's called, obviously, stories and, and laws and teachings. It helps to understand God and it was called God's nature and His um, and, and His law. Okay, um, then you've got conscience. So um, the what's called a conscience is uh, what's called that it's it's something that is within us that helps us to make um, to make correct decisions. Now, Catholics believe this is God's law, God's voice within us, helping us to make the right decisions and avoid sort of sinful actions then you've got judgment okay now judgment is you need to know sort of like the the religious sort of version of this right so it's the belief that god will judge whether we go to heaven or hell okay now you can link this to the idea of individual judgment and final judgment where the idea of our souls will go to heaven hell or purgatory when we die immediately individual judgment or final judgment when it'll be decided whether we go to heaven or hell for eternity um, the next one is Stations of the Cross, okay? Now, the Stations of the Cross are, um, are sort of 15 images, or icons would be a great word to use, 15 icons that are displayed around the church that depict the, um, the trial and death of Jesus. Now, I said 15 because the 15th one is the resurrection. If you said 14 and you didn't mention anything about the resurrection, that's okay, all right? Some are 14, some are 15, because some don't show the resurrection. Um, right, so the next one is Advent, okay? So Advent is the season of preparation leading up to the birth of Jesus, okay? So it's where we prepare for uh, it, it, prepare for Jesus' birth. You can mention about the four candles there, or, whatever, or the four weeks leading up to up to Christmas. You can mention about some of the things they do, the, 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 I mean, lighting the candles, time preparation, doing God's work, um, the, the color of purple and the links with that. You, you know all that sort of stuff. Um, when it comes to the epiphany, okay, so this one, all right, is, I think it's a decent chance this one comes up, all right, so make sure you know it. So it's the feast day that celebrates um, the Magi's visit to Jesus, okay? It's also believed to be the time where originally the incarnation was revealed, okay, where Jesus was revealed to the world. Now, if you want to think about it as being, so the Magi coming from afar, all right, it's the idea that they represent that Jesus is for everyone. Jesus is being shown not to just those people around them, okay, where Mary, Joseph, who he was born, when he was there when he was born, that local sort of community, if you want, right? But then you've got the symbolic um reveal to the rest of the world when the magi came and visited because they represent sort of people from far and wide um then you've got lent all right now lent is a 40 day okay it's maybe 40 days 40 nights it's a 40 day season that prepares us for holy week and you can talk about sort of things we do during lent the fasting and reconciliation and purple dosing the gloria to help you gain that second mark um even like the jesus temptations as well sorry okay you mentioned about that right the next one is pilgrimage, okay? So a pilgrimage is, is a visit to a, re, a holy religious site, all right? So you've got places like Lourdes Las, the, and, and Rome and the Holy Land. And you can say about that, you could also say, mention about how it is a time when we focus on our relationship with God by sort of shutting off the outside world and just focusing on him by visiting the holy place. Right, you've then got revelation, okay? So this is God Essentially, God revealing himself to a human being, but try not to use revealing again. So, say, um, I don't know, God making himself known or showing himself to human beings. Now, the major way that God will do this is through the Bible, but you could say that he may reveal himself to us through um, through answering prayers or um, through, uh, through another human being, all right, sort of carrying out God's work. Um, you then got purgatory, okay? So... Purgatory, all right, is what's called the the place where our soul goes to work off any um or to purify would be if good if you said that to purify any sins that we may have before going to heaven. So it's like a place of preparation if you want, a place of preparation that prepares our souls for going to heaven. So our sins are being worked off, being forgiven. 
Um, you then got the liturgical year, okay? Now this could be called the church year, but essentially it is um, the order in which all the different Christ uh, Catholic feast days take place, okay? That remember um, a variety of different things, but a lot to do with Jesus' life. So you could talk about, you know, it starts at Advent, all right? And you would say about all the Christmas period and then Lent and all that sort of stuff, okay? Um, so it is actually the six different periods, all right? But that's a lot of detail. I don't sort of necessarily want to remember that. Um, when it comes to the confessional, all right, or the confessional box, this is the place where reconciliation takes place, okay? It is a sort of, it's essentially like a booth or a, or a, a it's a little bit like a cupboard, really, okay? It's got two doors to it, all right? But it's a small box or room that um where we go to our reconciliation okay uh next one is the pope well, obviously the pope is the leader of the catholic church he's also the bishop of rome you can say some of the, the vicar of christ you can say that type of stuff that we've learned supreme pontiff you could say about how the power that he has was given to the first pope peter and has been passed down to him through apostolic succession which is where i'll actually go next i'll go straight to ap apostolic succession so Apostolic succession is the belief that the power that was handed Peter, the first pope, okay, um, to lead the church has been passed down from pope to pope to pope to pope to pope to today's pope, all right, so the same power that Peter had, today's pope has as well. But something also, also you can mention for your second detail, Jesus didn't just hand his power on to Peter, okay, he handed on sort of that authority to all of his disciples, well, if you think Peter was the first pope, well, his disciples were the first bishops. So the same sort of authority that he's given to his first bishops has been passed down to apostolic succession to today's bishops. They still, they have the same sort of responsibility and authority that Jesus' disciples did. Now, you've then got um, on here religious vows, okay? So these are promises that people make to God to commit themselves. And uh, examples of them are chastity, poverty, and obedience, okay? Or you can also refer to them as being the evangelical councils. Um, ictus, okay? So we now want to some of the symbols, okay? So the ictus is um, is, a, is a Christian symbol, okay, which looks like a fish, and it was used by um, what's called Christians in the past who may have been... Um, may have been sort of discriminated against or persecuted as a way, one would draw one arc and the other one would sort of complete it as a way to identify as a Christian. You can also say about the fact how it, um, how it is a symbol, okay, for, uh, it's called the, the letters that they stand for, Jesus, okay, so you've got um, Jesus Christ, uh, it was called God's Son, Saviour, okay, now, um, then you've got infallible, so this links to the Pope again, okay, so, um, when it comes to the, the Pope, it's called, if he makes an infallible statement, it means it cannot be wrong, okay, examples of these is that two infallible statements that have been made are um, about the importance and, uh, and the fact that the truth, if you want, of the assumption and the immaculate conception. They're two infallible statements, two things that um, the Catholic must believe. Um, right, going forward, uh, you've got a religious. Now, that sounds like a weird term, okay? Now, what it means is a person who's taken the evangelical counsels, a person who has taken those sort of vows to God of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So, for example, a monk and a nun, okay? Um, back to what's called the symbols, you've got the key row, okay? Which essentially is like a P and an X, all right? So, um, what it is that a, uh, it's a, yeah, so you can say that, all right? It's a Christian symbol that has a P that is intersected or crossed with an X. And the reason for this is that they are both symbols um, of, of Jesus, okay? So, the, the, the X, okay, is the Greek symbol, all right, for the first letter of Christ. And um, the, do, 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 the P is like the next one, okay? The P is the next letter in, in Christ in, um, in the Greek spelling of it, okay? Um, immaculate conception. Now, guys, don't confuse this. It's not to do with Jesus, so with Mary, okay? So it's the belief that when Mary was conceived, she was conceived without sin. Why? Because her womb was going to be a house for Jesus, so it needed to be a sinful, uh, sinful, <laughs> sinless place. Um, right, veneration. Still do with Mary again. Veneration is the idea that um, we respect or via or honour, okay, or honour something. Right now, this is always linked, or often linked, with Mary, or sometimes with the the saints. Right, that we venerate them, or that we I mean, we honor them, but we do not worship. There's a clear distinction between the two. We do not worship them. Worship is reserved for God. Now, 
Theotokos, okay, or Theotokos, I often pronounce it, is, right, the belief that, it's called that Mary is the mother of God, okay? So Theos means God, and Tokos means like bearer, all right? But it's the idea that Mary is the mother of Jesus, okay? For your second mark, you say Mary is often depicted in art as the Theotokos, okay? Or you could look at Jesus, but the fact that Jesus was born, uh, was called by Mary. Um, you then got retreats, okay? Now, retreats are quite similar, all right, to um, pilgrimage, but it doesn't necessarily have to be to a, like, a religious place. So it's more to do with taking time out your everyday life, all right, to focus on God. Now, it could be, all right, so for your example, this could be like a retreat where you go away for a couple of nights, or it could be like a daily retreat, all right, where you just sort of have time spent in sort of prayer and reflection, so prayer, meditation, silence, of sort of features of retreats. Um, the crucifix, all right, the crucifix is a depiction of Jesus' death, all right, and you can say about these are displayed in a variety of different ways. I mean, people wear a crucifix, displayed in the church, that type of idea. Right, on some, the next ones, you've got adultery, okay? So, um, adultery is, uh, what's called sex between um, a married person and a person who is not their wife or partner, all right? You could say this is sinful, breaks Ten Commandments, to get your second mark. Uh, when it comes to divorce, it means legally ended the marriage, to get your second mark, say about Catholics being against it until death do us part, or one of the purposes of marriage is that it is permanent. Cohabitation, okay, is to live together in a sexual relationship without being married, okay? And if you want to give a second mark for this, you can say about how it this is being sort of rising, becoming commonplace in society, or you could say that one example of this is a civil partnership. Um, when it comes to commitment, the word commitment, you could say um, this is sort of like the idea of being dedicated to something or someone. So you could say that um, somebody getting married is a form of commitment. Um, Next one, contraception, all right? Now, contraception is a method to try and um, uh, prevent pregnancy, okay? So you can say about two examples of this would be artificial and natural contraception, or you could link it to the ideas of, you know, to just say, one example of this is a condom, all right? If you're sort of struggling um, for the key language. So, gender equality, all right? Now, this is the belief that um, people of all genders are equal and should have the same rights, okay? So you could link that to the idea of... Um, sexism being wrong and all types of discrimination should be curbed to use that sort of key phrase that we've been using uh, so often next one responsibilities there's a lot of common sense stuff here guys responsibilities someone's responsibilities are the sort of roles or duties that they have to play so for example in a family or ever that uh, a lot when the resp roles and responsibility is to raise children if they've ha if they've got one all right um next one is roles which is quite similar to responsibilities all right but sort of the roles is sort of like um the oh, it's quite hard one to explain really but it's their function all right if someone's role is their function um it's their uh, uh it's it's what they they have to do it's a little bit like their responsibilities but it's their function if you use with function that'd be great okay so it's the function it's the responsibilities that they have to sort of carry out all right um so one of the person's role might be um the breadwinner to go out and to and to earn money that sort of stuff okay um right we're on to sort of like the section four ones censorship okay censorship is the belief that we should um suppress or stop some things being published often as they might uh, cause offense so you could say about how um some people are against this because of free speech or you could say that oh, i like to mean that newspapers or, or things like that that they often can be censored because they could be inflammatory they could upset people discrimination all right discrimination is sort of like um mistreating people okay mistreating and people um whether it be groups or individuals all right and it's often based on just like prejudice so one type of discrimination would be racism now uh next thing is extremism okay and extremism is supporting an idea um beyond or too far past sort of what is is viewed to be commonplace or acceptable all right so for example you could say about how um you could to isis you could say about how uh, when it comes to extremism it could be linked to terrorism and that sort of stuff Human rights, this is the belief that all human beings, regardless of sort of background, that there are a certain set of like standards that they should be allowed. So, for example, one of them is to be happy, okay? Um, the next one is personal conviction. This is when somebody has a real sort of motivation to support something. So, for example, a personal conviction might be that they might want to become a charity worker because they really want to fight against um, social 
injustice. So social justice, a key word, okay, social justice is um, promoting a what's called a fair society where all human beings are sort of protected. And you link that to the idea of Cafford or love thy neighbour or image and likeness of God if you wanted to. You've then got um, two, th two more, three more, sorry. One of them is prejudice. One of the, these is making a judgment on somebody based on, uh, what's called based on not really knowing them or not knowing sort of the details, just looking at the, the surface level if you want. So for example, this could be once again racism, could be sexism, could be homophobia, all right? Types of prejudice. Um, the last two are to do with poverty. It's one called absolute poverty and one is called relative poverty. Absolute poverty is like ultimate poverty, as in your human rights are being affected by the fact that you don't have money, okay? So, for example, you might talk about the third world, with a, the, if you want the developing world, that they, that they would live in absolute poverty because their human rights are being affected by the fact they don't have much money or any money. Then there's relative poverty. Now, relative poverty is the belief of people, the phrase often used is living be below or beneath the bread line. Now, what I mean by this is that not having enough money to be to to be um to function in the society that you live in okay so for example in the uk this may be somebody who um is living on um is living on uh, or living below what is the considered to be the poverty line okay having enough money to sort of sustain themselves in the society they live in Okay, so those are all the key words. There's quite a few easy ones. Take a common sense approach and hopefully this video, which has turned out pretty long, has helped.